We're back in San Francisco and we're at Moscone West. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of RSA 2023. This is day two of theCUBE's coverage. Really excited to have Kumar Ramachandran here. He's the Senior Vice President of SASE at Palo Alto Networks and he's joined by Rex Thexton, who's back on theCUBE. He's a cyber leader at Accenture. Gents, welcome, good to see you. Thanks for having us. So Kumar, you just came off of a keynote. You do a keynote on AI, of course, and network security. That's yeah. the hot topic here is AI. So how'd it go? Oh, you know, it, it, we're all seeing the impact of AI and ML on cybersecurity. Uh, I was on stage with Neil Bolin. Neil is the CISO of uh, uh, MLB, Major League Baseball. And we were really having a robust discussion on how one, AI ML has become absolutely essential. The reality is this, right? Many vendors, including us, we've been using AI ML to secure and to automate operation for several years now. Chat GPT has put it in the popular zeitgeist, right? And what we will continue to see is a transformation with co-pilots, autopilots, whatever the industry builds. But the discussion we had really was if you take it back to the basics, AI ML and data science only work if we have the right data, right? And the data really has to fulfill the three principles, right? You have to have complete data, you have to have consistent data, and you have to have correct data, the three C's. Complete, consistent, and correct. That's right. And if you have fragmented systems, which is how we used to build network and IT infrastructure systems, it's very hard to get that. So it's very hard to implement AI ML at scale. Whereas in SASE, you now have a unique opportunity where you can get a complete platform, your mobile users, your home users, your branch users, your SaaS applications, internet, cloud, private data center applications, network security, all of it coming together. So now you have the opportunity of delivering transformational outcomes to your Explain customers. Explain that a little bit more, SaaS. Yeah. Uh, so it's a kind of the big buzzword right now, but it has meaning. So give it some meaning, secure access, service edge. What should we know about it? Yeah, so if you think about it, right, pre-pandemic, when most customers were employees, were really coming to a branch office, accessing corporate resources. You used to put security primarily in the data center because that's where you're delivering your applications from. The pandemic really accelerated the transformation where people with digitization, much more aggressive adoption of cloud and SaaS, and then hybrid work became a real thing. We now expect to work anywhere. In this model, putting a firewall or a security stack in your data center alone doesn't cut it. You need a model where security is pervasive and can meet the user wherever she is. So what we did with SASE was we said we have an opportunity to reimagine re how security is delivered. So we built this highly scalable multi-cloud service that's distributed globally. Any user anywhere, when they're accessing their application, they get processed with a full stack of security. The other interesting thing about SASE is the policy model. The policy model has migrated to a zero trust model. Previously, people used to have the notion of, I'm in the network, if I'm in the campus in the office, I'm going to trust the device to a certain extent, trust the user to a certain extent, give them network access. Whereas now we are moving to a model where you really want a policy based on, hey, I'm going to publish an application, here's my user, let me specify a policy, my user has access to X applications based on a device pro profile. User application device, rather than worrying about networks. Yeah. I think those are the big transformations. So Rex, you know, I know when Accenture gets involved yeah. that it's actually a real business. Yeah. Actually, with the one exception of my first quantum demo was yeah. at an Accenture thing in Boston. It was yeah. un unbelievable, I learned a lot, but that was very cool. But, so you guys announced a bunch of stuff, the SASE Diagnostic and Advisory Services, SASE Implementation Services, SASE is a managed service, so you guys are seeing the opportunity here. Yeah. Explain you know, what's going on from your perspective. Yeah, so one of the things we've seen is, you know, as things have tightened up you know, recently, that a lot of our clients are, are slowing down the pace, and what we're trying to do with the diagnostic is create a data-driven approach to identifying you know, the business case outcomes, how they can deploy SASE and save money. This is a real business case, that there's a lot of cost savings, that can be deployed. A lot of people are using legacy architectures, running backhaul traffic through the data center, and 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 so th there is a meaningful business case that could be made in that. 
time. So this, this diagnostic is to go in where we invest some time leveraging the Palo Alto stack to go in and ooh, some feedback. <laughs> Testing one, two. Yeah, here we go. Someone said feedback. <laughs> someone said feedback is a gift, not this audio yeah, feedback. feedback. <laughs> I thought I was a rock star there. For I a love minute. that line. <laughs> but the, um, anyway, so the, um, the, um, the, the goal is, is to, to help clients identify that. And we feel if it's a data-driven approach, it, they'll believe it, right? If it's just a conversation, you know, consulting speak one-on-one, -on -one, you know, they're, they're less likely to buy. But if you can show them the real data, the user experience improvements, the cost savings, th then, it, then it becomes more real. And then, the implementation, you know, obviously we implement the, the technology in the case, but the thing that's more exciting to me is, is this SASE as a service or SASE as a managed service, because what we're trying to do is, is help our clients scale this technology, right? And a lot of, they can implement the, you know, some core use cases, but they oftentimes have a hard time scaling it out to the enterprise. And so what we're doing as a, you know, with the SASE as a, as a service is being able to go in and, and help our clients do this at pace, have an ongoing, you know, deployment and capability so that they can scale out through the enterprise in a cost-effective fashion and doing it in a shared service model where we can provide scale. Because I think that's the one thing, you know, obviously we've known Accenture for a long time, we can help clients scale and we can provide scale to this. And I think that's what we want to do because we, we are, <clears throat> can't stress enough the importance for our clients' to, needs to modernize. Everybody needs to modernize and we need to retire tech, you know, tech debt, you know, consolidate tools. because. I mean, look what it takes to do it now in a network, right? Mm -hmm. How many tools? <laughs> That's right. You know, a ton, right? And it, you can come in and, and leverage it into one platform, reduce the number of vendors that you have to work with, and, and, and reduce the tool blow. It drives a huge business benefit. So That's, you mentioned the business case, right? I mean, it's yeah. hard dollars this, yeah. th these days. Very hard right? dollars. I mean, it's they want to see it. it and, and so, and, and how has that changed? I mean, are they looking for, I mean, it, I know it depends, but are they looking for big numbers? Are they looking for fast payback? Are they looking for low risk? You know, low risk, high return. I think, so it's, I, I think, you know, and, and some of the, you know, I work with a lot of large clients, and you know, it, they they want they want to be able to scale without driving up costs. Kind of what cloud did was everybody ran real fast, but their operations costs went, you know, right. up exponentially, and they want to be able to scale but keeping their their costs flat and and do more with less or do operating more with the leverage. same. Operating leverage. Yeah. Operating leverage. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you know, ideally they get some cost savings out of it, but it's more about. You know, just being able to, to do more without you know driving up costs. So so stepping back a little bit, Kumar, uh, uh, what do you see as the real demand drivers for yeah. for SASE and the sort of market catalysts? So we see four uh, really important catalysts and projects that our customers are doing. Right uh, during the pandemic, we saw this VPN replacement. Uh, where people were traditionally having these VPNs that brought your traffic back to your data center and then sent it out. And if you're sitting in your home and you're trying to access SaaS services or internet in addition to your corporate resources, that doesn't make sense. So VPN replacement to a ZTNA model, where you move to the app user device-based policies without VPNs, that's a huge driver. The second big driver really is your on-prem SWIG or secure web gateway replacement. Right, people build these proxies that they used to deploy in their data centers, process the traffic there, and then send it to the internet. Again, makes no sense. People are migrating to a cloud proxy. That's a big driver. Third big driver, SaaS uh, adoption. People were deploying standalone CASB products to protect their SaaS applications. Uh, what they quickly found is that over 50% of the SaaS breaches are related to poor posture management. Because think about it, right? If I'm an enterprise, I can't understand every one of the 100 SaaS applications I have and how exactly I should configure it. And then every time the SaaS vendor doesn't update, what are the edits I need to make? So having an automated drift prevention mechanism, mechanism to protect it properly, that became the third big project. And then the fourth project that is particularly exciting, we're seeing the return of the branch. During the pandemic, rightfully, in many industries, the branch office was less of a, uh, priority perhaps, now it's back. Because people are back in a hybrid work model. Uh, you know, we were, I, I'm in the office three days a week, working from home two days a week. So people are having to re-architect the branch. There's a very interesting thing we're seeing in the branch office. There is not only a very variable user population, because I'm, you know, people are in and out depending on day of week. People are using rich media and video and Zoom in the branch tremendously. People come to the office, some of their coworkers are at home, so I'm turning on 1080p video on my Zoom call, so we're seeing ridiculous amounts of bandwidth explosion and variability. These are the four big drivers for SASE right you, now. Are you guys, are you back in the office too? A few days a week? Yes, or? yeah. 
So it's interesting, I go in every day and it, it's like bookends. Monday and Friday, traffic's light, except Friday yeah. afternoon everybody's going out, yeah. right? And in the middle of the week, and so how are organizations, are they, are they able to dial up, dial down? Do they have to? Yes. Uh, so if you think about it, if you're only deploying hardware boxes, then you would have to keep scaling, uh, scaling those boxes for peak capacity. Whereas SaaS is a service you're delivering from the cloud, so you can dial it up or down, depending on how your branch is, right? The elasticity that you get, in addition to security, is absolutely massive, right? Uh, yeah, and, I can't stress the security yeah, aspect of it yeah. enough, right? Bringing security to where the user's at. at you know, it used to be impossible, now it's delivered every day. That's exactly right, and, and you know, to echo some of the comments he was making about how Accenture adds value, right? Any IT project, there's a three piece, right? People, process, product. And vendors like us, we love delivering innovative and absolutely fantastic products, but partners like Accenture, those are the people and the process pieces, right? How do you ensure that you have the right kind of ROI? How do you ensure that the client's process transformation is adapting to this new model of security and network consumption, and they're able to accelerate that transformation for our customers. Well, that's where you get the business value. I mean, you get yeah. the technology, you have to apply it to a business, yeah. you have to understand the business. It might be, a, you guys have specific industry knowledge, yeah. and like you said before, Rex, you got scale. What, what, how does this compare to some of the other, you know, relationships that you guys, describe the relationship over time, what gives you confidence that this is going to going to fly? I mean, you guys have a lot of experience. What are the yeah. similarities? What are the unknowns? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you know, I think the big uh, what do we bring to the table uniquely, right? What we bring to the table very uniquely in the marketplace really is that for all the use cases that I described, it's a unified platform. Now, what does that mean? That in our case, it actually means that there is a single data lake that's collecting all the data related to network security and operations for that mobile user, the branch user, the home user, accessing internet, SaaS, cloud, data center applications. This has never ever before been done in the industry. There is absolutely no other vendor who's done that. Because we've actually uh, collapsed that data in one data lake, we're able to apply data science on top of it. And when you apply data science on top of it, we use, a, we use traditional data science like correlations, regressions, we use AI and ML, we use LLMs increasingly, we're able to automate security, we're able to automate operational outcomes. So when a partner like Accenture comes, what they're trying to do really is get our customers to not only use one use case, but the more you use, you have one plus one greater than three effect. The customer saves more as they expand, right? And the best of breed capabilities are native to the platform. So that's how the partnership, the customer benefits, Accenture is able to bring tremendous value, we're able to deliver an incredible platform uh, out there. Well Rex, that's your scale point that you were right. making before. What about from your perspective? I, 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 we were literally talking about LLM and you know, yeah. generative AI and, and the application of it to this because they have this, like, but you know, we, we feel that you know, we, we choose our partners that are innovative, that are you know, not thinking about what's today, but what's tomorrow, right? And I think that's what's super exciting to us. And, and to think about, you know, there's a lot of work in creating policies, but you know, as, the, as you learn from this data, you can auto-suggest policies, even yes. auto-implement policies, and it can become super smart, because I truly believe there's not enough security professionals in the world to, to secure the world, right? And so we, we need to leverage these new technologies, but they have to be trusted. And, and I think, you know, with the data, that, the collection that they have, they will have a trusted, secure AI, which is super important. Because if, if we get a lot of hallucinations, there's a big buzzword now. And yeah, yeah, I've been hearing that all week. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sure. But, the, um, but you know, then people aren't going to trust it, and they're not going to use it. And so it's super important. That's why we need to work with you know, you know, innovative companies that are reputable, that understand these capabilities and these techniques to implement them in the appropriate fashion. And yeah. Super important. That's well, wait, wait, come on, are you saying yeah. that's you? No, <laughs> no, we implement, no, 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 but we do implement. Yeah. They, they're the ones who will run the LLM, they'll do the training, right? But we'll help yeah. interpret it for our clients that's and right. implement it in and a meaningful it. fashion. Yeah, it's exactly. Really, is that, I mean, again, no, it's it comes a back true to partnership. The, it comes back to the business case. You're making a business case. You make a business case, you're making a promise to the, to the client. 100%. And then they're expecting that they're going to get at least, and you got to be, you have to come in with some degree of conservatism, and right. you got to hit that number or beat it. It's like yeah. earnings calls. You yeah. got to hit the number. 100%. You know where you're going to get you're going to get dinged. No, and I think <laughs> you know I've made a living in this industry of you know doing what I say, right? And I think that's super important that you live up to your word and, and being able to work with 
you know, partners and companies that you can do that is super important to us, and so that's why we're working the do with- The do-say ratio, yeah. got to be high, right? Yeah. People oftentimes get that backwards, say do. No, yeah. we want to do-say yeah. ratio's yeah. high. No, you know, but it's got to be achievable, little. and it's got to be attainable, and I think, you know, like I said, this, this is a seminal moment in time, I think, for security. We can really move the needle forward if, I, if we get this right. I think it is, I mean, you know, we're, I think we're all old enough to remember some of these yeah. giant waves, yeah. and it feels like we're, you know, over the last 150 days, it feels like we're entering another wave here. You know, it's very hard to predict what's happening. I mean, you got the crazy supply chain, the economy's really unpredictable, you got all this GPT and foundation model stuff going on, and uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of layoffs and a lot of engineers now starting companies that are going to disrupt. It's kind of exciting. A lot of M and A going on. Yeah, and, uh, exciting times. Th that's right. And uh, you know, it, it's times of opportunity, right? And opportunity. If you think about the opportunity, for the last ten years, we kept saying, "Hey, data is the new oil," and so on and so forth. You're seeing the opportunity right now. Uh, and uh, you know, to his point, if you look at the security landscape. Uh, the threat vectors, I was uh, looking at some of the, da the data points, right, you have, what is it, in less than 15 minutes from the time a vulnerability is introduced ex or, or uh, spoken about, uh, you have scans coming into uh, major customers. You have 150 plus percent growth of the use of things like Cobalt Strike. It's not going to be too yeah. far away when you see LLMs being used for, by the bad guys. So if you're not using data science, you're not using AI, ML, to actually contract all these and secure your customers, your customers are going to be exposed. And that's why having partners who can guide customers into platforms where data is king are going and to And I'm looking at this Unit 42 threat report, yeah. and 60% of the incidents take between f more than four days to, detect. to, to respond to. Yep. Right, and then and it's 40% to zero to four, that could be three. And what'd you say, it takes 15 minutes? It, so from the time, of, let's say, a, some major company announces a vulnerability in their products. In less than 15 minutes, you start seeing major uh, attempts, scans to exploit that vulnerability globally. Yeah, so four days, doesn't cut it. Right? It doesn't cut it, exactly. So you have to, if you're not using AI, ML, and data science, mm -hmm. uh, where it's LLMs, where it's uh, deep learning, where it's ML, you have to use all of the above. But it all goes back to the data. Garbage in, garbage out. That was true uh, pre-GPT, it's true post-GPT. Yeah. So if you don't have platforms where data meets complete, correct, consistent, sees, yeah. you're going to be out of luck. Yeah, so I what do you guys, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you, a lot of clients find out they have a breach from somebody else, which is quite <laughs> fascinating, right? <laughs> they, yeah. they don't even discover it themselves, which is, which is quite fascinating if you yeah. think about it. Well, hey, this has been, <laughs> This has been happening all the, for a long time in this yeah. industry. You go back to Stuxnet. Yeah. Was, you know, right? What about this this event? Um, I don't. Know, you guys here in 2020? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you were here for the last yep. RSA I got before the COVID. No, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, it was a weird vibe, right? Yeah. But now it's like back. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the numbers are. It's got to be at least 50,000. Yeah. There's say. a lot of energy, a lot of juice here right now. It's it's been yeah, pretty I mean, exciting it's, week. The future of this this conference seems very good. Yeah. The future of the industry is good. I, th I think the future of the industry is bright. I think we're at this, you rightly state that we're at a very pivotal moment, right? Uh, if you take the thesis that data science, AI, ML, LLMs are going to be a critical part of this transformation, you really have to go back to the drawing board and say, the products I'm choosing in my environment, will they allow me to establish a framework that is not manual? that actually can be run with AI and ML, and I think that has to be the start point of any IT transformation project, right? Uh, whether in SASE or without, if you're not thinking about what is happening to your data, right, as a CISO or as a CIO, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. For us as a vendor, uh, our obligation really is to make sure that uh, we are ensuring that we are gathering the right kind of data, we're very confident in that data, and then we're applying the might of our algorithms at scale. Yeah. Right, I'll leave you with uh, a couple of factoids, right? Our system today, we see and stop 236 billion, that's billion with a B, threats every single day. That's over a trillion in a week, right? So it is that scale at which systems need to operate, and it's also that scale at which you start learning enough that you can actually implement things in line and security, right? So while the bad guys react in 15 minutes, in our case, 
95% of the time, zero day threats, threats the system hasn't seen before, we're able to stop using inline ML. So our reaction time is zero seconds, 95% of the cases. That's real time, yeah. That's right. All right, gents, hey, congratulations on the, uh, on the launch and, and good luck with everything. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. No, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. Again. All right, it. you're welcome. Yeah. All right, keep it right there. Dave Vellante will be back with John Furrier. This is theCUBE's coverage of RSA 2023. Go to siliconangle.com. We got all the news. We got multiple journalists and writers here, so check that out. We'll be right back, right after this short break from San Francisco.